Hello, my name is Ferrin Glenfield. I'm the Church of Ireland Bishop of Kilmore, Elfin and Ada, a diocese which covers counties Cavan, Leitrim, Sligo, Roscommon and Longford, and parts of Fermanagh, Donegal and Westmeath. I'm speaking to you from an old railway bridge over the River Erne in Cavan, not too far from my home. And I think you can see the new road bridge in the background. The COVID-19 crisis has been a bridge too far for so many people. It's disrupted our daily lives. It's devastated businesses. It's denied us the ability to meet together as families and for sporting occasions and also for church. And it's brought illness, fear and death to many doors. Our diocese is recording these Sunday services, which are available online, to act as a bridge. A bridge bringing scattered and isolated lives together. A bridge that we can come to God through Jesus Christ. And so can I invite you to join in our worship with the words of the hymn writer, O oh, worship the King, O oh, glorious above, O oh, gratefully sing his power and his love, our shield our defender, the ancient of days, pavilioned with splendor and girded with praise. Join in, enjoy, and God bless. Good morning, and welcome to Ashfield Parish Church. My name is David Moses. And I'm the Bishop's Curate of the combined group of Coot Hill, Dernakesh, Killer de Shoney, and this church of Ashfield, situated in the northeast of County Cavan. Ashfield Parish Church is 225 years old this year. And on this Pentecost Sunday, we have a service of Holy Communion with the preacher and celebrant. Bishop Ferran Glenfield. And so we turn to worship God. Come Holy Spirit with your language of wonder so we may mingle our words together to scatter the gospel of grace to all around us. Come Holy Spirit with the music of your heart so, so we, we may sing, sing songs, songs filled, filled with, with memories, memories inspired us from your very mouth. mouth. Come, Holy Spirit, to rattle the windows of our souls, to burst through, through the closed, closed doors of our hearts, and, to and dance, dance with, with us in the fire of renewal. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray. Come, Come Holy Spirit, to, to us, us this day. And now we worship God in the words of hymn number 325 from Church Hymnal. Be still, for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here. of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand The presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here. Be still, for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned. 
sight Our radiant King of light Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around Be still for the power He has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything. Therefore, let us in penitence open our hearts to the Lord, who has prepared good things for those who love him. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left on them. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness. And keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for today, Pentecost Sunday. Almighty God, who on the day of Pentecost sent your Holy Spirit to the apostles with wind from heaven and in tongues of flame, filling them with joy and boldness to preach the gospel. By the power of the same Spirit, strengthen us to witness to your truth and to draw everyone to the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we come to that part of our service where we proclaim and receive the word of God. And our first reading is from the book of Acts and will be read by our parish reader, Mrs. Per Dean. And our gospel reading is from the gospel according to St. Luke and will be read by our diocesan reader, Mrs. Audrey Riley. The reading is from Acts 2, 1 to 4. The Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to St Luke, chapter 24, beginning at verse 44. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled 
that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And now we sing our next hymn just before the bishop comes to speak to us. From Thanks and Praise, number 134. Speak, O Lord. As we come to you to receive the food of your holy word, take your truth, plant it deep in us, shape and fashion us in your likeness, that the light of Christ might be seen today in our eyes of love and our deeds of faith. Speak, O oh Lord, and fulfill in us all your purposes for your glory. Teach us, Lord, full obedience authority words of power that can never fail let their truth prevail over unbelief speak O Lord and renew our minds help us grow the heights of your plans for us truths unchanged from the dawn of time that will echo down through eternity and by grace we'll stand on your promises and by faith we'll walk as you walk with us Speak, O Lord, till your church is built as the earth is filled with your glory. May my words be in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is Pentecost Sunday when we mark and celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit to the first followers of Jesus. A new movement was born, the Church of Jesus Christ, and 2,000 years later, we are part of that movement, the Church of Jesus Christ. What happened on that day when the Spirit came? 
Well, let's turn to the Acts of the Apostles to see what took place. The first thing we need to notice is that according to Acts, the Spirit came during lockdown. Like us, the early followers of Jesus were locked down. Before Jesus had left them, he charged them. He ordered them that they were not to leave the city. They were to wait and that the promise of the Father would come to them, that they would be immersed, baptized in the Holy Spirit. Lockdown is hard. The waiting stretches our patience like nothing else. I wonder what they did in Jerusalem. They weren't natives of that city. Most of them were country dwellers from up north, from Galilee. Where did they stay? How did they cope during lockdown? Like us, it must have been hard. We're longing, aren't we, to be freed from our enforced captivity, to break out of the prisons, as it were, that we've been finding ourselves in, to greet our family, to share things with our friends, and to be in church together. Lockdown. The second thing that we notice in this story of the coming of the Spirit is breakthrough. Luke describes what happened on that day. Luke was a medical doctor and he describes it almost in medical terms, the language that he uses. He says that the Spirit came almost like an infection. The Spirit was wind-born. It was like a rushing, rushing, mighty wind filling the whole place where the 120 disciples of Jesus were. Each one of them was affected. In what way? There was this enormous heat sensation. It felt as if their heads were on fire. And out of their tongues came words, tumbling words of different languages, understandable languages that they didn't know. It's extraordinary, the breakthrough. COVID-19 broke into our land, it came stealthily to our homes, our factories, our hospitals, our nursing homes. It's one of a, a family of viruses the coronavirus, which includes the <clears throat> a common cold, the flu, and pneumonia. Only 1% of viruses are harmful, like COVID-19, which can be fatal, and we've seen that. But according to science, 99% of viruses are helpful and not harmful. In fact, Many of them are essential to living here on planet Earth. The Holy Spirit came, almost like an invasion, an infection. Not to hurt, not to harm people, but to fill people with the life and love of God. Breakthrough. The last thing from the Acts of the Apostles that I want us to notice uh, this morning is this, that the Holy Spirit was about movement. In chapter 3 and onwards in the story of the early church, the Holy Spirit is moving people out with the good news of the gospel. These men and women were witnesses to Jesus and they took the message beyond their homes, beyond their communities, beyond their towns and cities. We can track and trace their movement in the Acts. Take Peter and John, or Silas and Barnabas, or Philip and Paul. They moved to places like Arabia, Syria, Cyprus, Turkey, Greece, Malta, Italy, with the good news of the gospel of Christ. And in those places, establishing small communities of faith, the Church of Jesus Christ. In 30 years, three decades, the movement was so fast that it established the church 
that we know today, the church that you and I are part of, the movement of the Spirit. And we're part of that movement today. In closing, we underestimate, don't we, the coming of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brings authenticity to our lives. We're able to live the life that Jesus lived. Our lives filled with the Spirit are attractive and appealing. We look and sound and do the things that Jesus did. The Holy Spirit brings a sense of awe to our lives. The God of all creation, the historic Jesus and the Jesus of faith in me, living in me, changing me deep inside, transforming me and giving me a sense of wonder as we look out on the world and as we sense our responsibilities in God. The Holy Spirit also brings agape, that is the unconditional love, which is shed abroad in our hearts. What does this do? It helps us, like God, to love the unlovable. It helps us to be kind in a harsh world. It helps us to be gentle in the brutalness of life. And the Holy Spirit brings adventure. In saying yes to God, we open our lives to all kinds of possibilities. With God, nothing is impossible. And so saying yes to God, we say no to certain things. We say no to telling lies. We say no, don't we? We stand up for the truth and we stand up for what is right. And we don't go with the flow, we go with the movement of the Spirit in the adventure of faith. Do you see what this day means? This day of Pentecost? We belong to God through faith in Jesus Christ in order to do what? In order to change the world. Everyone wants to change the world, but no one has the power to change the world except God because he changes people like you and me. He comes into our life by the Spirit. And he just doesn't reform us. He transforms us. We have fresh appetites. We have clear attitudes. And we have new agendas for God to make a difference in the world. In the next month, our services will be coming from different places and they're going to be hosted by people who are making a difference. Here, in our communities, in Kilmore, Elfin and Arda, in Ireland, and beyond our shores, across the world, Africa and Asia and to South America. We're going to listen to their stories and their experience and the reality of them changing the world in Christ. In Pentecost, a new movement was born, a movement which changed the world. I want to be part of that movement, don't you? Amen. And our next hymn is from Church Hymnal, hymn number 400. And 91. And the first line reminds us that we have a gospel to proclaim.
join now in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We come to our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. With great power, the Spirit of God is poured out on the expectant disciples. And as the body of Christ in the power of the Spirit, so let us pray. For a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the people of God all over the world and in all worship traditions for a readiness to be changed and made new, for a softening of the ground of our hearts to receive without fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all the peoples of the earth to know you and honour your name, for the healing of the nations, and a new thirst for righteousness and purity at every level and in every aspect of society. For a dissatisfaction with the pursuit of pleasure and all that distracts us from our true calling. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the grace and power to live out our faith in the real and challenging world, among those we meet and eat with, whose lives we share, without compromising that calling to be the body of Christ, living God's integrity and purity, forgiveness and love. Lord, in your mercy. For those whose lives feel empty or cheated, or filled with pain or worry or guilt. For all those whose hopes and dreams are in tatters, all who are in any way imprisoned or feel imprisoned during this current lockdown situation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who walk the dark journey of death and all who have come through it into your presence, for those who mourn the loss of their loved ones, 
those who are angry with God at their loss or not able to mourn properly. Holy Spirit of God, be their comfort and their compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all you have in store for us, whom you send out in your name through the power of your Spirit, help us to walk into the future because of the promise that you made that you will be with us always. Jesus, you promised that you would pray to the Father and he will give us another comforter to be with us forever. Help each one of us to experience that comfort in these trying days. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we join in the prayer of humble access on page 207 of the prayer book. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. We come to the peace. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, has given us the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And now just before we come to communion, we sing from Church Hymnal number 295. Come, gracious Spirit, heavenly dove.
Lift up your hearts, lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father Almighty and ever living God at all times and in all places, it is right for us to give you thanks and praise. We thank you on this day of Pentecost for the coming of the Spirit who fills our lives with your life and love. And so with all your people, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great, your glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Father, the creator, the sustainer of all things. You made us in your own image, male and female, you created us. And even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son to become man, and to suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world, he instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. and When he had given thanks to you, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, for this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We remember his passion, his death. We celebrate his resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our service of praise and thanksgiving, and as we eat and drink these holy gifts, grant by the power of the life-giving Spirit that we may be made one in your holy church, and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We, being one body, are many, even though we share the one bread. So we unite our hearts together as we pray, as Jesus taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Body of Christ given for you, preserve your body and soul unto eternal life. The blood of Christ shed for you, preserve your body and soul unto eternal life. So having been
being fed at the Lord's table. We say this post-communion prayer together. Faithful God, who fulfilled the promise of the Father by the sending of your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of eternal life, open our lips by your Spirit that every tongue may tell of your glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So, on this Pentecost Sunday, we are being sent out with this dismissal. We have heard the voice of God who scatters us to gather the world into the community of grace and hope. We, we will, will go, go to, to fill the emptiness of others, to bring, bring fresh air into all the stagnant places of our communities, land and world. We have heard the words of Jesus, who calls us to share the whispers of healing, of reconciliation, of renewal. We will, we will go, go to comfort those hiding in shadows, to be the breath of kindness to the ridiculed, to share in the silence of the broken and grieving. We have heard the rush of the Spirit's wind, who would shatter our complacency and give us voices for justice and righteousness. We, we will, will go, go to sing songs of strength to the weak, weak to whisper words of love to those who know only hate, to shout for the renewal of all people everywhere. May the Spirit of Truth lead us into all truth, and to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and to proclaim the wonderful words and works of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us this Pentecost day and each day. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.